This is Buzvuja, a magnificent piece of history that dates back from the Bulgarian communist era. This year, on 23rd of August, we mark the 40 years anniversary since the grand opening back in 1981. After the fall of communism in 1989, the monument was abandoned and neglected for almost 30 years. Until six years ago, when a young architect, Dore Ivanova, a founder of Buzuja Project, decided to preserve the monument and save what was left from it. Join us in this documentary series exploring the Buzuja Monument. The story of Buzuja Monument is linked to three main events that happened on the top of the mountain. The first event was in 1868, the last fight of the Haji Dimitar's rebels, then in 1891, the formation of the Bulgarian Social Democratic Workers' Party, and the last event, the battle between partisans and fascist forces in 1944. In the beginning of 1959, the Bulgarian government decided to launch a contest to design four monuments, one of each for all three historical events that happened on the Buzuja mountain, and additionally, a monument to be built right on top of the Buzuja peak as a memorial. The contest was won by the Bulgarian architect Georgi Stuyuf. However, the actual construction of the Buzuja monument began 15 years later, in 1974, January 23rd, Architects, engineers and construction workers began with the preparation of the site. The Buzuja peak was leveled down 9 meters using TNT from 1,441 meters to 1,432 meters. 15,000 cubic meters of rocks were removed from the peak. 17,000 tons of concrete, 40,000 tons of reinforced steel and 3,000 tons of gilded glass were used in the process of the building the monument. The project was financed with public donations. Due to the harsh weather, especially the weather conditions in the winter, the construction took more than seven years to be built. On 23rd of August 1981, the Monument House of the Bulgarian Communist Party, also known as Buzuja Monument, was finally opened to the public. Музайките, И ако не са тези градини, които да, да стоят така, то цялото това нещо се падна. И всъщност този целият облик, всички тези квадратни метри бяха паднали само в рамките на няколко месеца, зимата на 2019. Че ние тогава всъщност се оплашихме за тия мозайки и тогава почваме да работим първо за тях. А в момента с, с навещето, с това с страничната защита, вече са на сухо и вече наистина нямаме разруха. Така, както ги казах. Тук ще да. удариш главата, така че се наведи. И тук се намира в момента под седалките. 
Нали имаше седалки вътре, нещо това е залата. Та това е тука, тя се връща в обратно. Защото имаше половин метър буклук и ние го чистихме миналата година. Иначе нямаше да останам. За тук нямаше да има мрамор, ако не беше заринат с буклуци. Смисъл, открихме го. Сега се каже. Както и тук, виж тези белия мрамор, който е, той беше заринат в буклуци и никой не знаеше, че го съществува. И ние като почистихме, само се вижда мръсно, но нямаше през какво беше. И тук вижда копчини, копчини от буклуци, които се показаха. Това са така наречените външни мозайки. Тук не е сега тук, има и тези помещения. Това е вентилационното, да. Не беше ужасно. Не беше ужасно, отколкото беше последния път. Тази врата е към същото вентилационно, което видяхме отгоре. Само ще към стълби нагоре, да. И тук има две сървесни и такива помещения. Не знам сега, но това е така толкова интересно и по-интересно от това. Къде е тук електротаблата? Оттам са влизали едно време хората от тези адукти. Така. От тук, ако тръгнеш да говориш, ти знаеш пак на пилона. Това е пилона. Е, това е интересно да влизаме. Добре. Тук има и ракети. Тия двете ракети всъщност са създавали налягане за водата, за да може от тук да стигне догоре. Даже има други ситуации. Квадратно бетонно нещо е резервуара за вода. 50 кубика вода са се събирали тук и всъщност е използвано за противопожарни цели. Тоест е имало резервуар, който да гарантира пожаробезопасността на мястото. Това е горе-долу. Това е всичко, всичко, което има въпроси.
Unfortunately, after the end of the socialism, many Bulgarians in the early 90s broke inside the monument and stole whatever they could. Metal, steel, marbles, glass, heaters, even the light fixtures. The only things left were the mosaics on the wall, which were in serious danger as of the copper ceiling was missing, all of the rain and snow goes inside of the building, destroying the mosaics and overall the whole constructions of the monument. In order for the mosaics to be preserved, the roof and the missing side windows have to be repaired but until that happens, there might be no mosaics left to be preserved. That is why Dora and her team of specialists collected all of the fallen little pieces of the mosaics from the floor. These pieces which were still on the walls have been preserved by building these so-called shelters on top. However, there are still mosaics left which needed protections to be built around them and those are in the outside ring.
The monument has been open for the public from Wednesday to Sunday from 9 to 11 a.m. and from 1 to 4 p.m. except Mondays and Tuesdays when the monument has been closed for maintenance. Every day between 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. time, the main hall has been reserved for the Communist Party BKP to hold their meetings there. The main entrance for the tower was shut because there were some safety concerns about the inner structure of the tower. Interestingly enough, however, was that the red stars on both sides of the tower with their 12 meters high and 6 meters wide size were the biggest illuminated pentagrams in the world. They were made of multi-layer rubin glass made in USSR, specifically for the Buzuja monument. That was the story of Buzuja, a monument that roughly lasted eight years of working, serving as a political museum and ceremonial venue, while the past 30 years was neglected not only by the government, but by the people themselves. After all these years, thanks to Buzuja project, their partners and team of specialists, the monument will be preserved so the future generations can learn about their past.